Uh, thanks for staying with News Up Prime tonight. The State Capture Commission of Inquiry has just seven months left to conclude its work. It began in August last year and has, has already heard oral evidence from more than 90 people, including former President Jacob Zuma and other high-profile officials. Our President Cyril Ramaphosa again affirming his commitment to appear before that particular inquiry if he's called to do so. So let's reflect then on the past year. We're joined by the inquiry's chairperson person, the Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. Thank you so much for uh, your time tonight, uh, Dr. Zondo. You've had Thank a you long day. It's been a long day. <laughs> You've given <laughs> multiple interviews. Well, uh, uh, there have been many days over the past year or so which have been quite long, and yes. this is one of them. So I wonder then, as you and your team decide to go on this road trip as it were, of speaking to the nation to communicate the work you've been doing over the past 12 months. What is the one thing that you wanted to communicate about this inquiry? Well, the one thing that is uh, very important that I always want to communicate is the fact that uh, this inquiry provides us as a nation, provides us as a society with an opportunity to look at what look at ourselves and look at what has been happening on the, uh, in the past few years in our country, particularly with regard to allegations of state capture and the rising of um, levels of corruption in the country because they certainly have reached completely unacceptable levels. And to say to the nation, we need to use this forum in order to uh, identify exactly what it is that we didn't do right as a society in the past years, and to say what is it that needs to be done in order to make sure that we get our society right, and to make sure that where there has been wrongdoing, where there has been criminality, there will be consequences. But as we do that, I emphasize all the time that we can't succeed unless society, unless the people support the commission, come forward with information, to assist the Commission because without society supporting the Commission, without people who have knowledge of what has been happening coming forward, the Commission cannot succeed. At the same time that you make that call, what we also see then are whistleblowers who come before the Commission mm -hmm. whose lives have been completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. Some of them are living in absolute fear for mm -hmm. their lives mm -hmm. because of the kind of things that they have exposed. Mm -hmm. To the extent that that's the case, what do you think that the environment does in terms of it being conducive to encouraging people to come forward mm. without fearing that it's either that or they lose everything? Mm. Well, what is very important, I think, it's the commitment of people, ordinary South Africans, to building this country, to making this country a better country because a lot of people appreciate that a lot of things have gone wrong. That's why we have these levels of corruption that have reached the proportions that they have reached. That is why we have these allegations of state capture. And we can't have anybody helping us except us ourselves as South Africans. And in order to do that, some people must have courage and come forward. And we encourage that as many people as, as possible should come forward and share with the nation through the commission what they know. Indeed, there will be situations where people are scared, people have been victimized. Some of this evidence that one has had are, is evidence of victimization. One is still going to hear the whole story. People will still ca ca come around and give evidence and maybe say that's not the truth, what witness A, witness B, witness C has said. But we will hear everything. But certainly there have been evidence of people who say they have been victimized. But some of them, have definitely come forward and you can see that they are determined to make a contribution to helping our society. What is the burden on the commission? It's one thing if you are a free state um, farmer that mm. was involved with the Stina project mm. where South Africans don't know, they know your name, but they mm. don't see your face. Mm. It's another to come onto a national platform mm. and have that exposed to the rest of the country, it brings with it a certain level of risk. Mm. So what is the burden that you as the commission then carries mm. in terms of ensuring that all of these people mm. are also safe? Because you've had a number of instances where people have, mm. have come to you and said, 
I don't know what's going to happen to me tonight. Mm. Well, it's a very huge burden on the part of the commission because uh, if one person comes to the commission to give evidence and something were to happen to, to him or her, a lot of people would be discouraged from coming forward and we can't afford that. But all, all we can do is to talk to authorities to make sure that they can get protection. So protection can be provided under certain circumstances, but a lot of people that uh, should be coming forward haven't come forward, but some have come forward, and we, we praise those who have come forward, who have found courage to come forward. I mean, we all have had um, evidence of a witness who said, I'm here, I've been threatened, but I was determined to be here. And you have had witnesses who who say, I'm not asking for any protection, I'll, I'll deal with the situation. So there have been a lot of courageous South Africans who say, we will not allow our country to continue in this way. We will come to the commission, we will share evidence. The one part, when I talk about that, the one part that I want to mention is that I am disappointed that the numbers of people who have been in the cabinet over the years and people who have held high positions within government, directors general, deputies, directors generals, that the number of those who have come forward is very limited. When you look at how many people have been in cabinet, cabinet ministers over the years, when you think about deputy ministers, when you think about directors general, and you look at the ministers, the directors general who have come forward, it's a small number. So I continue to appeal to them to say, there is no way that many of you don't have knowledge of a lot of things that were happening that were wrong. You must come forward and, and share the information with, with, with the commission and with the nation. So it, it seems that part of the challenge when it comes to witnesses is too pronged because you're mm. dealing with ordinary men and women on the street mm. who mm. are fearing literally mm. for their lives mm. and officials who are waiting for you to mm. almost go and call mm. them mm. to come in mm. rather than, than, advocate, than you mm. know, put their hand up. Mm. What does that do? for an inquiry of this nature, given the kind of questions that we had mm. going into, mm. um, into it about mm. whether or not it's a credible process, whether mm. South Africa should be spending mm. any more than the 100 million rand that has already, <laughs> gone, that has already gone into it. Mm. Well, the one thing that um, we, all of us as South Africans, need to appreciate is that we can't have a country where people can do all kinds of wrong things, crimes and so on, corruption, and get away with those things and there are no consequences. That, that, that's the bottom line. We have got to have to be a society in which anyone who in the future gets involved in, in criminality, gets involved in corruption, must know that there will be consequences. Now, it is not in regard to all cases that we, so we must have commissions. There are um, lots of cases of corruption that are dealt with by the police, the hogs, the NPA every day. But sometimes you need a commission such as the one that I am chairing. And uh, it was deemed necessary that there should be one. And in this case, it is important for the commission to get as much evidence as possible so that in the end, the chances that there will be consequences for those who may have committed crimes, may have been involved in state capture, or may have been involved in corruption. The chances are good that there will be consequences. It does it put you in a difficult position to have to almost pursue, for lack of a better word right now, mm. those that you think might have information or provide answers? And especially when you consider the kind of political climate that this country is in. What are the considerations that you make when uh, you talked about former ministers, former mm. DDGs? Mm. You have the powers to subpoena mm. whoever you want, mm. but do you have to think twice about it? Well, put it this way, my approach has been, and our approach has been throughout, that first of all, we would like people to come and cooperate with the commission without us having to use our powers of compulsion. But where people do not cooperate and we believe they've got material information that is important for the commission and that falls within the terms of reference of the commission, I will not hesitate 
to use my powers of compulsion. But our approach is to first approach people if possible and say we believe you have information that is useful to the commission. Please come and let's, let's hear from you. And if they cooperate, that's fine. But if they don't cooperate and we know or we believe on reasonable grounds that they have information that's relevant, we will use our powers of compulsion. Despite the extensive evidence that you've already been able to gather, it sounds to me that there is a sense that you're only scraping the surface and you're running out of time to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So as far as the total of the work that you're going to be able to do, how much longer would you want this inquiry to be extended for? And mm. as far as terms of reference go, mm. for those applications that are coming in, for you to investigate mm. white monopoly capital, for mm. you to investigate apartheid era looting, because <laughs> there have been a number of applications on the sideline that mm. people are saying also constitute mm. state capture. Mm. I wonder what consideration do you give to that then? Well, obviously, I mean, let me start by saying I think you are right in saying when one looks at what has emerged, while it's a lot, there is still a lot that one can tell hasn't been touched. So, and when one looks at the levels of corruption, one understands why there would be a lot that hasn't been touched. But a commission such as this uh, can't be there forever. It's got to stop and end somewhere and prepare its report. That means that we have got to prioritize because we can't investigate every case that we have throughout the country. So we've got to prioritize and uh, try and make sure that we look at certain important cases. So in terms of, um, how, uh, of our extension, I had hoped at some stage last year that by August this year, we would have finished the hearing of oral evidence at least, and that what would remain is the preparation of the report but uh, uh, that has turned out not to be true. But of course, we have traveled quite, quite some ground. We have done Denel, although there must still be another phase. We have done Transnet, we have done ESCOM, we have done uh, aviation, aviation, SAA, we are going to be doing SABC quite soon. But there is still quite a lot that, that is left. At this stage, our lifespan as the commission goes up to the end of Feb next year we are going to apply to the High Court for an extension. Uh, and we will be working hard to try and make sure that the hearing of oral evidence doesn't go beyond mid-year next year. So that at least the second half of the year can be left to the preparation of the report and finalizing everything. That's what we are going to work towards. Of course, the problem with uh, a commission such as this is that you can never be sure what the investigators are going to unearth in a month's time. They might just unearth something that is just so big, you need to have more time. So, but that, that's our play. We'll talk then about your investigations team, because we've seen them uh, be at loggerheads at times with some of the legal representatives that are there at the Commission of Inquiry. Interesting that Jad Zondo is laughing. So we'll find out what exactly is behind that laughter. And of course, we also took to the streets to ask you about what you think about the work that uh, the Zondo Commission has been doing. All of that after the short break. You're live on News at Prime. Do stay with us.